God saves everyone. The destiny of all mankind is to eventually be saved from eternal separation from God. Matthew 25, 46. And these shall go away into everlasting Aeonios punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Evidence 1. The KJV translates the Greek word Aeonios into the word everlasting or eternal. Aeonios is an adjective of aeon. Aeon does not carry with it never-ending time. According to laws of language, an adjective cannot have a greater force than the noun from which it originates. So when they translate Ionios into everlasting or eternal, it's not a good translation, and therefore means the Bible does not actually say punishment lasts forever. The Young's literal translation gives the correct translation. Matthew 25, 46 And these shall go away to punishment age during, but the righteous to life age during. The Young's literal translation teaches, when Ionios refer us to punishment, it means age during punishment. When, when Ionios refers to life, it means life age during. When Ionios refers to God, it means God is age during. Will life last longer than an age? Will punishment last longer than an age? Will God abide longer than an age? 1 Timothy 1 verse 17 tells us that God is immortal. That is evidence God will abide past one age. 1 Corinthians 15 52 to 53 tells us that humans will eventually be immortal. That is evidence. Humans will eventually have life longer than just one age. There is no Bible verse that teaches that punishment will last longer than an age. Evidence 2. The Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Old Testament written by 72 Bible scholars. When these Bible scholars saw the word olam in the Old Testament, they believed the correct translation for olam was ionios. Ionios is the same word found in Matthew 25, 46. Here are examples of the word Olam Ionios used in the Septuagint Bible, but Ionios did not mean literally forever. Examples, Jonah 2, 6. The earth with her bars was about me forever. It was not literally forever. Deuteronomy 23, 3. An Ammonite shall not enter the congregation forever. It was not literally forever. Habakkuk 3, 6. Mountains are everlasting. They were not literally everlasting. Exodus 21, 6, a slave serves forever. It's not literally forever. Leviticus 28, 8, the Mosaic covenant is everlasting. Hebrews 8, 7 to 13, it was not literally everlasting. Joshua 4, 7, stones were to be a memorial forever. They were destroyed. It was not literally forever. 2 Chronicles 2, 4, animal sacrifices were to be offered forever. Hebrews 7, 11 to 10, 18, it was not literally forever. Genesis 17, 9 to 13 was an everlasting covenant. Galatians 5, 6, it was not literally everlasting. This proves that the word aeonios does not always mean literally forever. Evidence 3, there are punishments in the Bible that are said to last forever, but they ended. Jude 1, 7, Sodom and Gomorrah. Punishment of fire raining down on their city was said to last forever, but the fire raining down on their city did not rain down forever. 2 Kings 5.27, a man's punishment of leprosy will last forever. This punishment of leprosy did not last forever, because it ended when he died. Isaiah 32.13-15, a judgment is said to last forever, but it ended. Evidence 4, according to Isaiah 66, this all happened during the law of Moses. Jesus came to earth with fire and chariots like a whirlwind to kill the non-believers. Jesus pleaded with all flesh and killed many with fire that was unquenchable. Jesus gathered all nations and tongues and they saw his glory. Jesus made a new heaven and earth. From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh came to worship before Jesus. How do I know the time frame was during the Law of Moses? The prohibition against eating swine's flesh was given in the Law of Moses, Leviticus 11, 7-8, Deuteronomy 14:8. It implies that this event is taking place during the time period when the Law of Moses was still in effect. The Bible does not give false prediction, so we will assume Isaiah 66 already happened. Consider all this apocalyptic language for a moment. An entire revelation of events, new earth and new heaven, Jesus coming and killing the non-believers, and then everyone worships Jesus, all happened, and yet life goes on as it always did. There was no punishing that lasted forever, even though it sounded like it was forever. Therefore, I see no reason why we should think the book of Revelation's judgments will last forever, since it's just more of the same apocalyptic language. Evidence 5. 
1 Timothy 4.10 For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. When the Bible uses the word, especially, it implies two different groups of people. Who are the especially in this verse? Those who believe. If the especially are those who believe, then who's not included in the especially cannot be those who believe. Example, I tell all of my kids that they will get $20, especially those who did their chores. When you use the word especially like this, you are declaring that these people did something the others did not do, and that makes them special. In this case, the especially people did their chores. This means the others did not do their chores, and yet all of them still get $20. 1 Timothy 4.10 declares that these people did something the others did not do, and that makes them special. In this case, the especially people did believe. This means the others do not believe, and yet Jesus is still their Savior. They're saved from eternal separation from God. Destiny. The destiny of mankind is to eventually call on the Lord and be saved. Regardless of all the things mankind will go through before they achieve their destiny, their destiny is inevitable and sure. Why is their destiny inevitable? Because God has sworn it. When an all-powerful God swears something, we can be sure it's inevitable. The inevitable final destiny of all mankind is to eventually swear allegiance to the Lord. Isaiah 45, 22-23 ESV By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. What happens to those that call on the Lord? Romans 10, 13 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So mankind may not all call on the Lord at the same time, but someday it will happen as the Lord has said. We know the Bible is not always in chronological order. It appears the book of Revelation is also not always in chronological order. We see in Revelation 5.13 everyone everywhere saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. It appears Revelation 5.13 gives us a future glimpse of the things that happen after Revelation 22, a time when all beings everywhere have finally turned to the Lord. And what happens when beings turn to the Lord? They are saved. My interpretation may not be the same as the mainstream church. However, it's important to remember that the majority is not always right. The Bible speaks of a time when the church will fall away from the truth. Thessalonians 2.3 Therefore, it is not unreasonable for me to believe my interpretation is correct. There are Bible scholars that agree with many of the ideas I have presented. This interpretation offers a message of profound hope suggesting that God's love and mercy extend to all, and that even those who have strayed from the path will eventually find redemption. It aligns with the broader biblical narrative of love, forgiveness, and the ultimate triumph of good.